It is time. Yeah. Okay, I got all my questions. I think here they are. Ladies and gentlemen, da, 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 the moment has arrived da, 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 to hear from the man himself, Ariel. Yeah. Hawaii. Live from the Box Studios in beautiful New York City. How you guys doing back there? Everyone okay? And now to answer your yep. questions. Perfect. Oh, yeah. been better, man. How are you? I'm doing all right. You know. very animated right now. I like you. Me? Yeah. Who? Me? Um, Who, me? I, I, uh, I feel great. You know, we got a little break coming up here, giving people a little extra meat on the bone so they don't miss us too much. And uh, then we say goodbye, and then you'll really miss us when we're gone. Time now for everyone's favorite segment of the week. It is time to answer some questions. Uh, Luke. Hi, Ariel and crew. Longtime listener. First time commenter. I just wanted to share an interesting fact about UFC 300's main event. By defeating Jamal Hill... Alex Pereira has become the first light heavyweight champion to successfully defend the title in 1,133 days, UFC 259, Bohovic versus Adesanya, and the first to successfully defend against a ranked light heavyweight contender in 1,526 days, UFC 247, Jones versus Reyes. This is made even more impressive when you consider that he's only been in the UFC for 888 days. With this in mind, I pose this question to yourself, GC and Rick. Is Alex Pereira the guy to bring stability to the crazy 205-pound title picture? Amazing work as always. Loved the shows from Vegas last week. Keep it up, guys. I say yes. What do you guys say? Isn't that incredible? He's only been in the company for 888 days. Probably not. <laughs> Seems oh. like he's speed running a third title, so probably not. What does that mean, speed running? Like he's trying to fast track to heavyweight to get a, another title shot there, so... Yeah, don't expect that <clears throat> he'll be like a light heavyweight stalwart by any means. I don't Tom know. Tom Aspinall. Uh, that was interesting took with the, the picture, social media. right? Well, no, he he took to social media today and confirmed that he's going to be on UFC Manchester, and now he's just waiting for his opponent to sign. Oh, okay. Wonder if it's Alex Pereira. I was thinking about um, a new segment, like because 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 that's a great. Uh, and then what what happened on Monday? Um, oh, the whole Deontay Wilder Eddie Hearn thing. Remember that? A new segment where it's like, end of the show, what I miss? And then you say, well, this happened, and this happened. So Tom Aspinall took to Twitter. What else did I yeah, miss? Yeah, he took to social media, announced that it's official for uh, UFC Manchester. Oh, he announced he announced Manchester? He said he have, he's officially on UFC Manchester, and he is just waiting on his opponent to sign the contract. What's the day? Didn't say. Oh, okay. Um, but you know what I mean? Because like we're, I feel like I, I go to a black hole during the show. Yeah. And all kinds of, yeah, like yeah, I, yeah. I ended the show. I was like, what? Deontay Wilder took a picture with Eddie Hearn and he's he's on team matchroom? What the hell is this? Crazy. Anyway, uh, well, that's good news. I did like the picture that they posted of him looking over Alex, but I don't think first of all, I spoke to Alex's team on Monday. They said he's not fighting on uh on uh, 301 because they said that he broke a second toe in the fight. And then they posted the video. Did you guys see that? They posted a video of uh, when he broke it. And they were trying to like snap it back into place. Yeah. He was wildly calm about that. It was crazy. I felt more uncomfortable than he appeared. Yeah, he was like, yep, it's broken. Let's just put it back in place. Yeah. So anyway, I think we see him down the line. And I think we see him for at least one or two more heavyweight fights. There's enough, excuse me, light heavyweight. There's enough at heavyweight for the likes of Tom and at light heavyweight for the likes of Alex. I don't feel like they're going to rush it. Um, Justin, happy Wednesday, Ariel and the crew. From horrendous to tremendous, congrats to the Parlay Boys for the mighty resurrection. Onwards and upwards from here on out. Just wanted to provide GC with some positive closure. Our Atlantic City meeting and mutual betting slaughter that evening. You shouted me out first on the program last Wednesday, then said we'd make it all the way back on UFC 300, and boy, did we ever. I won back every dollar, almost to the penny, and you had quite a successful run as well. You seemingly manifested this, so I owe you a debt of gratitude once again. Long live the Parlay Boys. Any truth to the rumor, rumor that, much like Yuri, you were standing outside the sports book and just taking in the energy? Yeah, I'm actually surprised no one got a video of that. Yeah, I actually saw Yuri out there. We dapped up. We said hello. Yeah. He was like, you're getting the energy from the arena. I was just like, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to bounce back on these bets, man. He's just like, best of luck. He's like, did you take me plus 114? I'm like, you know it, Yuri. And then we went our separate ways. That was Justin that just asked that question, though? Yeah. Look at me with the names, man. Look at me with the names. I remember that from meeting him. Shout out to him. I didn't win every penny back yet, but we'll get there. 
Yeah. We'll get there. Um, slow and steady. Anyway, he also adds excellent work from the whole team for all the content provided throughout the entire week as a film industry professional myself. I understand how much effort must have gone into all the prep and coordination. Thank you, Ariel, for everything you did to make 300 even more monumental. Your friend from Queens, Justin. You're right, Justin. It was it was an undertaking, but they nailed it back there. So appreciate it very much, as do they. Ahmed, hi, Ariel. Why is there no pushback on Dustin getting the title fight the same way people were mad at Colby? Both got the shot coming off one win and are 0-2 in title fights. Oh, I don't know. Maybe because Colby didn't fight for like two years when he got his title shot? A little bit different, wouldn't you guys say? I mean, I, I understand the sentiment, and I do think Justin losing helped, and I do think the fact that Armin said no helped. Think of it that way. They went to Colby first in this situation and just said, oh, yeah, because he weighed in, he's getting this title shot two years after he fought uh, Jorge Masvidal. So. All you need to say is the Armin part. Armin was offered the fight. Sure. And turned it down. It's not the same situation. Yeah, it feels like a circumstantial thing. And then I also, I, I guess something else we missed. Dana White was talking with... Uh, with Robbie from Barstool and said that uh, Mateusz Gamrot was offered to Islam and Islam turned that down. Hmm. So it feels very circumstantial for, for DP getting this. It's kind of like the like the the Cheeto fight. Like there were circumstances that got him there. Sure. Uh, feels similar here with Dustin Poirier. There you go. Um, we move along. Hector. What's up, fellas? Great coverage for 300. Felt like the MMA Hour team really came into their own last week. I'm sure you have had this asked before. But given your growing success and platform, would there ever be a circumstance where you and Dana could have a sit-down interview and have an honest conversation? I know both parties would have to agree, obviously, but I feel like Dana has really leaned into doing media this year. Call me crazy, but I feel like it would actually benefit the both of you and be great for the sport. I'm sure there's a lot of other factors that play into this situation, but would be quite the scene, maybe for UFC 500. I mean, UFC 500 is in, what, like 16 years? Um Thanks for all you do. Love from the 305. I just I just don't see it happening. Um, but never say never. I don't see it never happening. It's not something I'm pursuing. And when you say he's leaning into media, it's a certain kind of media. I don't think he needs me. I know he thinks he doesn't need me, and he doesn't need me. Um, it would be something. It would be a grand old time. And as I've said time and again, more importantly... To anyone that I've had a quote-unquote beef with or an issue with or whatever the people online want to call it, I am always open to shaking hands and moving on and letting bygones be bygones. With the people that I don't care for and they know who they are, the people that wronged me and they know who they are, the people that may think I've wronged them, whatever it is, uh, I always just feel like life is too short. You can be mad. You can remember you could try to forgive. You could try to move on. And uh, I always just kind of feel like that animosity, that that hatred, that that aggression just kind of festers inside of you and isn't healthy. It's, it's a different kind of illness. And so I try not to have that. And you can always feel certain things and we're all human and we may like things and not like things, but I, I try to not let them linger and, and, and forgive and forget. And if I got a call right now, I would never forget I would never forget all the stuff that has happened and I haven't shared all the stuff that has happened and maybe one day I will and maybe one day I won't but um I just I just feel and 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 not not even for an interview or a scoop or anything like that I just I don't I don't want to have bad feelings towards anyone um and I don't want to be in 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 a sort of toxic standing with someone so I don't know what that all means um, I don't think this is happening anytime soon, but uh, perhaps, you know, perhaps down the line. Who knows? Our old friend Ant Evans writes, Dana White announced the comeback of the biggest star in UFC history after getting past a crumpled up piece of paper. My question to Ariel and the boys is, what is the best news you've ever gotten scribbled on a ripped up legal pad page? For me, it was when I got a note passed to me in Psychology 101 from <laughs> Jane Samways that she wanted me to take her to lunch. Alas, Jane actually didn't go out with me because she caught me 
doing NWO two sweet signs with my mates outside the classroom and pointing my thumbs to myself like Razor Ramon in celebration. <laughs> um, I actually have a similar story to that one. Um, actually, like shockingly similar, which I guess that is actually amazing. I'll tell the story in a moment. Um, I don't think a lot of the good things have happened via a, a crumpled up piece of paper. Um, how do you guys feel about Chandler's take on the crumpled piece of paper? I kind of That's agree exactly with him. what I would say. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, okay. You agree with him? I'm no, I agree with this. him. Uh, I'm in it. Well, can, can I can can a man speak here? Can I give you uh, my Who, my me? riff on it? Uh, I agree with him in the fact that I like that they did it after the fights, not to take away anything from UFC 300. Uh, but the paper itself was uh, the the paper, and then like the bad acting of oh. Connor versus Chandler is happening at UFC 303. Look at what happened, guys. Uh, I did not like. I didn't think it was cool. I think they should have had a promo ready to run once everything was done. You know, John Anik, Joe Rogan, Daniel Cormier react, react to the main event. That was so crazy. And one last piece of news before we get out of here for UFC 300. Wow, Mac is back. Right. Blah, blah, blah. That's what I think they should have was done. Was that your Hans Zimmer drop? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like it's it. kicking off a promo. Rick, why do you think they did it this way? I don't have an answer for you. Uh, maybe to to show Conor McGregor who who is running it. I I I couldn't tell you that that I have an answer because there doesn't there's not a good justification that I can think of. So unless Dana White is asked about it in the future, I don't know what the answer is. I agree with you, GC, about overshadowing it, like doing it on Thursday. A lot of people seem to think that it was going to happen on Thursday is a little bit weird because it takes away to a degree. But I will also say they announced Habib and and Connor on a Thursday press conference before an event in LA. That doesn't mean they have to do it again, but they have done this in the past. I think people would have been excited for 12, 24 hours and then they would have focused on 300. So I don't think anyone would have not bought 300. A. Yeah, can, I, can, can we stop there for a second? What does overshadows UFC 300 mean? What exactly happens? Oh, Antonio, my argument is uh, if uh, they uh, do uh, it uh, as they enter the main card, like as you're going into the main card or like right before Max and Justin, you're just like, uh, Conor McGregor is coming back. Like it wouldn't overshadow it, but it's just like now you're digesting that news that Conor McGregor is officially back while the other fights are going on. Thursday, I would have been cool with too because I do agree with you. I think what's, they would have reacted. What's the downside? Okay, so uh, before before you answer that, that's, if you recall, how they announced um, UFC 200. It was in the middle of UFC 199. They had the promo, and then Brock Lesnar showed up, and he said, you know, can you can you hear me now or something, or do you see me now, whatever he said. And then they reacted, and then we moved on. They also announced Diaz McGregor on that same card in the middle of the card. I think it was during the prelims, uh, to be honest. So they've done all of this before. And remember that one with uh, Izzy where he got he didn't love the promo and all that stuff? So they've done everything before. It just seems like right now... The new thing is to do it in the post-fight press conference. And I could tell you there was a debate as to how to do this. And I could tell you there were some people trying to get it on the broadcast. I think that if you do it on the ABC prelims, maybe as the last stop before 300, everyone writes about it, tweets about it, posts about it. And that is just kind of used as a way to let people know about the UFC. And oh shit, there's 300 on right now. It was just announced during UFC 300 that Conor McGregor is coming out. To me, that would have been... A, a sort of extra layer of promotion for 300 just to put out the bat signal one more time that this is happening and you use Conor McGregor coming back as the last, you know, bit of promotion and push for the card. So if I were in charge, and I know I'm not, but if I were in charge, I would have done a mid-card just to let people run with that news and, oh, by the way, mention that 300 is is on. And if you're one of those people who happens to be scrolling, happens to be online, like, oh, shit, 300, let me buy it. It's on right now. I like that plan. I'm all for that. That plan sounds great. I'm just pushing back against the idea of like overshadowing. I don't know exactly what that means. Like what, what happens from that point? Does everybody go, oh, this Max Holloway and Justin Gaethje fight stinks? Like what, what exactly no, happens? I, 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 think the, I mean, it's exactly what we're saying. Like it just takes the attention away temporarily from the fights. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter when they announce it. It's like by the time we get around to June 29th, the same amount of people are going to be watching. You'll have heard that Conor McGregor is fighting by then. And if you're going to watch, you're going to watch. So like, it's all sort of a moot point. Uh, but I think if you announce like, as you're going into a fight, I don't know. I just feel like as big of news as it is, it would temporarily distract from it. I, I, I would present to you that 
the the biggest fighter in the sport is worth that distraction at all times, every time. No I'm really not too passionate mind. about this. I'm not going to lie. Like wh- wherever they do it is, you know, I, I j- like I don't <sighs> think it matters that much. I think most people would agree with you, to be honest. But the same way I feel passionate about the poster and the promos and all that stuff, what 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 piques my interest is the fact that it feels deliberate. It doesn't feel I, like a I'll fight that happened. There, yeah. So so why is is that's the question I asked Rick at the top? Like why did it happen? Because or, or this is the company, the by the way, that got really mad at me for breaking news before their promo, <laughs> and now your your promos have been resorted to. You know, a piece of paper. Right. You know right. what I mean? So so that's just not how big fights get announced. That's just not how it, it, it happens. It could be like you said, like it's the new thing. Like they did it for MVP too. Yeah. Announcement and, of and MVP this is just much comes bigger, on. right? Oh yeah, much, much bigger. But for sure. what I wonder is, was it deliberate? Going back to the Rick point, yeah, was it so. a way to say, like, okay, like no one is bigger than us, no one's bigger than the organization. We announce all these fights the same way. Like, even the piece of paper gimmick <laughs> was weird. Like he could have sat up there and said you know, all right, I got some news to break before all of this. Like, even that felt a little bit like they sat back and were like, okay, what's, you know, what's the way that we can make this seem so kind of ho-hum? I don't know. The whole thing was... Well, you you only have to go back to the night before where Dana White at the Power Slot press conference said we have no deal in place with Conor McGregor. Yeah, that wasn't Which true. is odd to say when you're on the verge, if not already signed to deal with Conor McGregor. So I don't... The breadcrumbs lead me to the to the opinion that it was intentional. Why it was intentional, I could not answer. Don't know. Um, but it feels like a misstep. I don't buy the idea of like overshadowing when you have the most captive audience, when you are looking at the most potential people who are going to buy your pay-per-views in the future and the largest way to grow your audience, and you've got the biggest fighter in combat sports, fire that bullet whenever you can fire that bullet. And I, I don't know why. Um, and even if it was to happen after the fights in the post fight press conference, whatever, certainly people will find that, but that's a smaller audience than the people watching on ABC. That's a smaller audience than the people watching on pay-per-view take advantage of that and sell that pay-per-view with Conor McGregor with everything you've got. Michael Chandler's talking about, you know, I want to sell 2.4 million pay-per-views and, and do better than Habib. It ain't going to happen on a, on a sticky note, uh, handed to somebody at a post fight press conference. That's not the way it's going to happen. So I don't know. I feel like it was a major misstep. And by saying that you have no deal in place the night before, it feels like it feels like it should have been more of like a surprise. Like it feels like you're like brewing something by just completely denying it when the way that you announce it is by just bringing a piece of paper to the table. Right. Like it feels like he kept you were trying to set up a surprise. Calling it internet bullshit. I don't know what that was all about. Like you you've announced fights this way. What are you talking about? We're just going off of history. Um some uh some factoids regarding three hundred that the UFC has issued Third highest gate, we knew that, 16.5 million attendance, 20,000 new record for a UFC event at T-Mobile, sixth consecutive sellout in 2024, and the 11th straight sellout dating back to October of 2023. Most most watched UFC pay-per-view prelims ever across ESPN platforms. That includes Plus, Hulu, SVOD, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes combined. Most watch UFC pay-per-view prelims ever on ESPN with 1.86 million total viewers. Um, viewership on ESPN grew every 30 minutes, peaking with 2.49 million total viewers at 9.48 p.m. Eastern. Would have been a good time to announce Conor kind of McGregor. Uh, most viewed sports event of Saturday during primetime. Amazing. And a couple more. Number one all-time merchandise sales. A GC contributed to that. Number two Let's all-time go. merchandise sales for any UFC event ever. Only behind UFC 193, Rousey versus Home. Um, highest grossing sponsorship sales for a UFC event in history, all available inventory sold out. Um, and then there's a bunch of other stuff here. Best performing event on social media in UFC history. Two, 213 million views coming from Max Holloway's knockout of Justin Gaethje. Crazy. I like that they posted it right away. That's always fun when they do that. All right, we move on. Oh, by the way, what's crazy about Ant's story here is, which I think is a story I might have told on the show before, when I was in Syracuse, I was, psychology was my minor, and uh, I had a psychology class, this was my second year, and and I would we would always sit in the same, you know, auditorium, I remember it very well, and I always sat next to this girl that I never spoke to, but who was quite good looking, and I met her midway through the semester at a bar on a Friday night. And I didn't really go out much. It wasn't really my thing. 
and uh, still isn't really my thing. And I was like, oh, you sit next. I couldn't believe it. Gave me her number. Oh, it was so exciting. I remember it was February and All Star Saturday night was happening. And I was preparing for an interview with the Iron Sheik the next day on my pro wrestling slash MMA radio show. And, you know, usually Friday night you get the number. You probably wait. What do you wait, GC? You know, you're younger. Tuesday, Wednesday. What's the what's the game plan? What day did you get it? Friday. Oh, man. Tuesday, Wednesday might be a little too long. Okay. All right. So, anyway, I called Saturday. Too soon? Uh, no, I don't think so. Well, I don't think so. Whatever it was. It was too soon? <laughs> well, I mean, it was either too soon, which I doubt, or it was... Hey, what are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm prepping for my interview with the Iron Sheik on my wrestling MMA radio show tomorrow morning. Either way, I never heard back. Um, and so very reminiscent of Ant's story about the psychology class and the note and and then the too sweet NWO side and, uh, and, and then never hearing back from Jane Samways. If you're out there, Jane, give Ant a call. He's looking for you. Uh, Lewis, moderator. Emeritus, Ariel, in this current run of the show, it feels like we keep reaching new peaks and milestones. This last week has been so much fun to watch, listen, and enjoy. The show, yourself, and the crew are truly operating at all-timer levels. Something I wondered, how did presenting and interviewing on the sofa compare to the in-studio desk setup? You're without your laptop, desk, trinkets, and tchotchkes, just yourself and the subject. Do you find this added openness and opportunity to read body language makes the interviews feel different? Do you find different reads and avenues to explore when conversating and interviewing this way? Thanks again for the week that was, is, and will be. Love to the entire crew, Lewis. Um, always a very thoughtful question from Lewis. And, and, I totally understand where he's coming from. This is different. This is different than in an arena or at someone's gym or at someone's home or what we did last week where you're in a hotel. I've done the hotel interviews before. Usually I'm going to someone's hotel, but we've done, I did, did a lot of them with BT where it was a neutral ground and it's different. It's different when someone's coming to you as opposed to when you're coming to them. It's different when you're in the studio as opposed to, like I said, the arena. I didn't feel like it was so much different than this because they were coming to us and I'm used to doing the hotel interviews, but I will say I really enjoyed it. It felt very comfortable. It felt very relaxed. Everyone was very open. Um, I think they all noted that they were comfortable and relaxed. So yeah, I really liked it. It's a, I'll tell you this much. It's a much different vibe when they come to you when they're in your home, so to speak, as opposed to when you go to them. It's just different. The, the, it's just the, the, the openings are different. Um, to me, it's very noticeable and palpable. So I love it all. I don't really like one way over the other, but it's just a completely different vibe. And I love the hotel interviews. They're, they're, they're very relaxed. They're very unguarded, chill. I enjoyed it very much. Uh, Max, hello, Ariel. A question on the potential Nunes versus Kayla matchup. Why is Dana so positive about the idea of Amanda Nunes coming back and doesn't seem to hold any grudge because of her retirement? He clearly hates early retirements, GSP Cejudo. Why is he so open to the idea and does not hold any grudge towards her? Greetings from Germany, my man. You know, when I read this, I was like, yeah, he's right. Because Dana has told us that he doesn't like this. And yet he, he never really seemed to hold that grudge against Amanda. Honestly, this is a question for him and not for me, but... I don't know. Maybe he feels like she did it all and it was justified and maybe she told him before and those guys didn't. But it's a great point and that's why I wanted to read it. But uh, that would be a question that he would have to answer. Taco Enthusiast. Hi, Ariel. Do you feel pretty confident that they're saving Leon Edwards for the Manchester card at this point with 301, 302, 303 set with main events? Yes, I do. And UFC 305 in Perth. It has to be him versus Bilal or somebody at 304. Yeah, for sure. Um, there's not a chance that that title fight co mains the McGregor Chandler 303 card, is there? No, absolutely not. Especially not if they're going to England three weeks later. No way. By the way, your interview with Mark Coleman was incredible. The space, time, and respect you gave him to open up was beautiful to watch. What a story. What a man. I know you're not at ESPN anymore, and you're never at the fights themselves. And I also know you get a ton of shit from people, but that interview exemplified why the UFC needs you in the sport. Yes, needs you, even if you're not in the building. That's very kind of you, Taco. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that interview with Mark was something else. I didn't really do anything. He told the story, but I appreciate it very much. 
Newman. Hello, Ariel and crew. Now that McGregor and Chandler has finally been announced in the most bizarre fashion, he notes, for 303 on June 29th, let's do some fantasy matchmaking to fill out the main card. We know they aren't going to add any title fights to a McGregor card. They might add an interim title fight, if you know what I'm saying. And they always want to have big names on International Fight Week. So, and if it's interim, no pay-per-view points. What would you pick as your ideal matchup for 303? I'll start by kicking off the main card with Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Namagamadoff. What about the co chief support? Uh, I love the idea of Ian Gary versus Colby on that card. I just love the idea of Ian versus anyone on that card, just to 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 tie him to Connor. Do you guys have a fight that you want to see on that card very much so? No dream fight, but they did announce uh, Joe Pfeiffer is going to be fighting on that card against Mark. What do we got? It's it? another thing I missed. Yeah, yeah MAB. We... MAB. What is it? What is it? Who's he fighting? Mark Andre Barry. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I was very excited. I'm yeah, happy to yeah. see. I saw Joe at WrestleMania. Yeah, big body bags back in the octagon. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. It doesn't really matter what else they put on it. I'm sure they're gonna try to load it as well. But I uh, like the Gary idea. I like having gotta have Gary, and, Gary and, and Conor McGregor on the same card, and why not Colby Covington? Oh my God, it'd be huge. That's all you really need. That's a that's a that's a fine co-main. Um, well, it sounds like you were you were teasing. Well, if there if there's else. no interim, yes, but interim then would be interim, the yeah, interim. But the vision, but yes, G- uh, Gary Gary Colby is the answer for women, sure. That, women's one thirty five. Wow, she said it on Monday. Be crazy. It would be. Um, That'd be nuts. My laptop's on fire right now. What is going? I feel like it's gonna like. How old is that thing, man? It's brand new. It's wow. two. It's two and a half years old, but they just put in the new thing, and it feels like it's gonna two and a half years old, brand new. I mean, no, but they put in the thing last summer. Oh yeah, yeah, you had to take it to the shop. Yeah. Sounds like you just got to take it back to the shop, man. It hmm. feels like it's gonna explode, Frank. What do you think I should do? You know what? I think you should throw it in the trash because you're not responsible enough to take I it do. to the Apple Store. I don't have time. You got to make the appointment. I even this. was like, hand it off to Connor, let him take. Oh, how how nice of you to. Uh, to uh, volunteer hey, Connor to do something. Rising tides. So Frank does best, ships. man. That's what Frankie does best. Oh, my God. Uh, Spud Greg, during your interview with Kayla on Monday, kept thinking to myself, that last pound is always the hardest to lose. With that in mind, do you have any worries about her making championship weight? No. Uh, she is a pro. She is a legend. She is an Olympic gold medalist two-time. Clearly, you know, she wants to do something. She sets her mind to it. She does it. Gilbert, dear Ariel, I believe in the post UFC 300 show you do with PT and Chuck. You said that you knew that the Connor Chandler fight was a done deal a few days before Dana read it off the back of his crumpled laundry ticket. I have two quick questions. Why didn't you break it if you found out? Uh, because I was asked not to. And that's why the 200 thing has always bothered me, what Rogan said and what other people have said. Ask anyone on the planet including the UFC, including Dana White. If anyone has ever told me this is off the record, it has always remained off the record. And so I will never break that. It's not worth it. No scoop is worth it. No tweet is worth it. No report is worth it. And I was told this, and I was asked to not talk about it. And uh, and you got to respect that. Because I can assure you of this, if I did break this rule, I wouldn't be here. No one would want to talk to me ever again. Ever, ever, ever. I would lose all trust. Um, I know you have touched on this topic before, but are you pretty much done breaking news? Not really. It's just the relationships, the show, the interviews are more important. But if things fall in my lap, I'm just not as uh, aggressive, I guess you can say. And it's not as important. Also, I don't write for a website at the moment. And so I don't really need to do it. It's not part of the job description in my life at the moment. But that could change. Um, But sort of felt like, been there, done that, and don't have to do it anymore. And quite happy about that because it wasn't, it was very stressful, as you can imagine. And, and I have no issues with my time doing it, but I'm not calling people up. What about this? Who's doing this? Who's, I mean, it, it used to be incessant back in the day. Um, JD Miami, was it just me or was the UFC's video for Chael an interesting choice? While the fight is obviously legendary, it must have been rough for Chael to essentially watch himself lose all over again. I mean, he did lose, and I thought they they showed him in a good light. Um, I texted him afterwards, and he seemed fine with it. He seemed happy with it all. So I don't think that he... I mean, like, you can't sugarcoat it. He's going into the Hall of Fame. By the way, I, I wanted to ask you guys about this because they said it afterwards. Do you consider Chael a Hall of Famer now because his fight is in the Hall of Fame? Rick, what do you think? Yes. 
<clears throat> even though it's not accomplishments, it's just about the fight, is he a Hall of Famer? If he is a participant in it and it is in the Hall of Fame, then yes. Um, what about you, Connor? I think he's part of the UFC Hall of Fame. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer, though. Right, because then afterwards I, I saw them saying like, oh, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. I, I don't really have a strong take, but I, I wonder how other people feel. Like it came up with Cub Swanson as well with Duhu Choi. Part of the UFC Hall of Fame. Yeah. Not a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. Okay. I mean, the only thing I was thinking that whole time is where's Anderson Silva? Let's let's call out the obvious, right? Like, where was Anderson the, Silva? The guy, the guy who won the freaking fight is not anywhere to be seen and not mentioned, and we're just, you know, chails in the front row. Is Anderson getting, Silva in the Hall of Fame? Probably they, not. Didn't they I don't actually even know. Year? Why didn't we go to the Hall of Fame? Yes, we Ander- they did, yes, they did. Anderson do him last Silva year. was last year. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Frank, um, the audio guy. Yeah, good job, Frank. Yeah, I'm yeah. Had to push the I'm. You know what? I'm impressed. Frankie got me there. I'm I'm very that impressed. Was, that was really good. Um, what, did, what did you ask, uh, Connor? Why didn't we go to the Hall of Fame when we were in Vegas? The actual physical Hall of Fame? Yeah. It's like a, it's a wall on a stairwell. Oh. Why didn't we go to the stairwell? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Why did you go? I don't know. I didn't know where it was, man. It's... I thought it was going to be like Canton. No. I, I would love for it to be like Canton. Cooperstown. It sh- should be. Should be. Um, Santiago, hello, crew. With the addition of Taylor Serrano, too. By the way, I, I mean, didn't really get a chance to talk about it today, but yes, yesterday was announced uh, Katie Taylor Amanda Serrano, too, is going to be right there. That fight right there. The rematch. The co-main for Jake Paul. No, right there. This one. Right here. Other shot. Main shot. Yeah, right there. That that right there is going to be the rematch. Uh, excuse me. The co-main is going to be the rematch. This time at 140 pounds. The co-main is going to be the rematch? No. The rematch is going to be the co-main to Jake Paul and Mike Tyson on Netflix on July 20th. What an announcement, guys, for so many reasons. Katie Taylor, matchroom fighter, DAZN fighter, some way, somehow, she's fighting on this card. You see no matchroom logos on the poster at all. Um, Serrano moving from 126 to 140, two-minute rounds, 10 rounds, two-minute rounds, not what she was doing, obviously, you know, prior to this in her last couple fights. Um... And if you're a, a boxing fan who was like, this is crap, how could you now hate on the event? You could just close it afterwards. But this, I think, brings great legitimacy to this event. Taylor Serrano 2 is going to be in front of 70,000 people at AT&T Stadium and in front of millions on Netflix. Pretty nuts. Isn't this insane? This is incredible. I'm yeah, stoked. Got to be there for it. I feel I feel the excitement just radiating off the I mean, screen here. And all all joking aside, like it's gigantic. Yesterday morning, my wife was like, "Did you hear about Serrano and Taylor? Like, this is happening." Amazing. But in the morning, I thought it was great. Um. Anyway, uh, he also asks, "Will Ariel be the host of this event?" Um, not host, but uh, there have been some talks. Don't know what's going to happen. Nothing official. But I'm never really the host of these sort of like WrestleMania. But uh, let's see, July twentieth. Uh, big money. I'm going to um, recap what you wrote. You asked me if there should be a promo bonus coming off of the uh, Moicano promo that has gone everywhere. No, I don't like that because I kind of feel like, you know, I sort of feel like then people will try too hard and it'll be fake and inauthentic. I also don't like when they press them like, give us a name. We need a name. Like, yo, man, he the guy just fought. What do you chill out? Um, but no, I don't think there should be a promo bonus. That wouldn't be a good idea, just like the Twitter bonuses weren't a uh, good idea. Uh, Pecan Pie up in this asks me about Armin Sarukian turning down the title fight. You know, I, I don't blame him. DP, excuse me, uh, Chandler brings up a great point. Uh, he says, like, yo, man, this thing could pass you by. What if I win? What if Connor wins? You might not get that title shot. It's a tremendous point. It really is. Um, six weeks rematch you're probably not getting another chance after that one uh tough one and i'm sure it was a really tough decision drick has had to go through it it all worked out for him so ultimately i don't blame him but i mean he brings up a great point the winner of june 29th could possibly usurp him but i i feel like he thinks that they'll go do something else and he won't be if not it's got to be him next um takes a lot of confidence to do that some stones Ultimately, if there wasn't the threat of that, I, th- I say a thousand percent he made the right call. Cross is asking me about the people who are involved in the rankings 
And uh, he says that most of them are from expired websites and websites that haven't posted in years. I mean, it's sort of like when they find out that dead people have voted in elections. Um, I don't I don't know what to say. Uh, he's asking me who's actually voting on these. I don't I don't know. I really don't. And I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if there's someone just moving and shaking it. Um, it's bizarre. You go look at the, the, the websites and I love when Dana sits up there and he's like, you guys vote on this. I'm like, who are these guys that are voting on this? Who are these people, um, working for, you know, rock station websites and websites that don't exist or don't up is, is very strange, um, that they base things off of this, but. Why is Max Holloway ninth in lightweight and Justin Gaethje is third? Uh, who the hell knows? None, none of it makes sense. Um, this is from Ozzy Jamal. Okay, so he wants to do rapid fire for us if we are interested in these upcoming fights. Charles Oliveira versus Gamrod, yes or no? Yes. Shh, yes. Um, Justin Gaethje versus BSD. Yeah, of course. Yes. Hell yeah. Armin versus Islam Dustin winner, yes. Yes. Diego Lopez versus Mofsar Evloev. Yeah, rematch. Oh, yes. Shout yes. out to Jed Mashu. For sure. Uh, Jim Miller versus Benil Dariush. No. No. Yeah, Big no. leap. Um, Bobby Green versus Patty. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, 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 now that now Bobby had his fight, Hinata, who, who is Patty's next fight? I... We just need to know. Is it, it, it going to be Hinato? Is it going to be Bobby Green? It's got to be one of these guys. Right? I need they it to be a skill jump. Like, they I they, they to, can't like, go really off the grid and give us some rando, right? I, they could. No, it's got to be a could, name. But it it's needs to be, be a name. name. It needs to be a name. Also, huh. he's got all these guys calling him out. He's talking about them, too. It's got it, Bobby Hinato. It's one of those guys, for sure. Max Ilya. Yeah. Oh, 10, God. 20 out of 10. What's, yes. what's bigger than yes? So good. 10 times yes. Yes. Ilya got me fired up today. He's not a fan. Um, Yuri Ankalaev. Mm, I want to see if that. Yuri is not fighting for the title. I want to see uh, Yuri versus Jamal Hill. Yes. I'm with Connor. And and Ankalaev and Pereira? I guess. He, he, yeah, Uncle I mean, deserves that. Yeah. I mean, he hasn't lost in, in no. forever. And he, I mean, he, he should have gone the, uh, the media title shot after the draw. Like they went And it's a guy that could potentially grapple uh, Pereira, which which could okay, cause issues Okay, can I ask you something him. about that? Do we Please. care about the quote-unquote answering of questions with Alex Pereira? No, absolutely not. Are you I kidding don't. me? I don't want the questions yeah. answered. I want him to win a, a, a heavyweight title as well. I want him, yeah. to, I want him to have like a 15-fight MMA career that had... Uh, him as a double champ at one point, uh, belt across three titles and like a uh, fourteen and one record. Like I want it to be okay, ridiculous. So we're locked in right now. We're on the same page. On I all want these. it to be yeah, the most legendary in. thing ever. The best case scenario is he just fights John Jones next, gets the heavyweight belt, and then just retires. <laughs> and he just had a twelve fight career. That's like the most ridiculous or a thirteen fight career. That's the most ridiculous thing ever. I love it. Poatan. Roundtree, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, I'd like <laughs> to see that for one. sure. Yeah, no, no doubt. one's saying Khalil's ra- name right now, and that's crazy. Bo this Nickel, Jack Hermanson. <laughs> uh, he's laughing, and no one's saying his yeah. name is crazy, as if he's it's like, crazy. They're all ducking. He's him. the boogeyman. They're division. all ducking Khalil. Yeah, I don't mind Hermanson for uh, for Bo Nickel. That's, funny. that's a big freaking that's, step up. That's but a if big he loses, step. If he loses I mean, that, then uh, Bo Nickel versus Joe Pfeiffer. We saw this with Joe Piper. Like yeah. Hermanson's not the guy you wanna you wanna uh, learn how to fight in the octagon against. I mean, that's a big leap. Not to say that he can't beat GM, him. Uh, Mike Heck threw out GM three on Saturday. Yeah, I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Um, Is I'll, Bo Nichols' next move headlining a fight night? Is that kind I don't mind of a, that either. I kind of like him being the pay per view guy. I don't want him. I like him being a three round kind of pay per view guy. But yeah. I mean, but pretty crazy a, to a him. Hermanson, him being like, oh yeah, like this is one of the crazier cards I've been a part of, and like he's been a part of like yeah. 285 with John like Jones it. and International Fight Week. Like he's been on some pretty big cards. Can I say something? There is a a trickle down effect. You do get the rub. Like to me, I view when I view Bo, I'm like, yeah, that's a pay per view packed arena, Las Vegas guy. The fact that they keep putting Khalil on the Apex cards makes you feel like he doesn't have that moment. He doesn't have that shine. He doesn't have that buzz. So. If I'm him, I think that's accurate. Do you think? I mean, both... think about Ankalaev, right? Like, you know, he, like we we just need to see him more in a in a big spot. That's yeah. that's what we're missing. Do you think Bo would say yes to headlining a card 
but it's at the apex. Fuck no. I, I, I would I would say I would much rather be on a pay-per-view opener or even a pay-per-view prelim than that. I'm saying they offer it to him. Hey, man, we'd like He'll you to fight it. Jared Mishart. Oh, headline maybe he takes it. But like, UFC Apex 95. He'll take it, but I agree with Ariel. That's where yeah. he belongs. Uh, Aljo Ortega. That's where belongs. Hell yes. Yeah. yeah, 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 I, yeah, do, yeah I do sure, really sure. love Aljo Mofsar too. And then Figgy Yan. Yeah, but it seems like... Oh, Figgy Yan for sure. Kind of, yes. If it, like, if it, it can it happen, feels yeah. like they don't want it. Who would be next for Figgy? Because Figgy, like Figgy had wanted Jan, and then Jan kind of like didn't want it, and now it seems like Figgy doesn't want it. Now he just wants a title shot. I, I would love that fight, but I don't. I don't know if it'll materialize. It's a great Figgy, fight, though. Figgy Cheeto. I'm down for that. Oh. Figgy Song Yudong. That's a fun one. He's such a welcomed addition to 135 because they've kind of been knocking each other off, and now he gets to hop in. He's. I feel like one more, and then he's he's knocking on the door. There's just so many people knocking on that door. I I, I get it. <laughs> he also writes, congratulations on your new moniker, Mystic Mensch. After foreshadowing in your Mighty Mouse interview last week, people getting their black belts after scoring knockouts. Did you see that? Uh, Alex Perez getting great. a black belt. Yeah, that was really good. Thanks for everything that you all do. Amazing week of content. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, Gary asks if all number one contender fights should be five rounds. Yes, but they very rarely dub fights number one contender fights beforehand. But yes, in a perfect world, uh, would love it. Would absolutely love it. Because I, I, I did sort of feel like um, Oliveira Armin should be five rounds. And then, and then, like, is Costa Strickland a five-round fight? Uh, uh, El Peruano, Ariel. Hi, Jacqueline. Is one of the funnier moments in recent show memory. Listening to Asim Zaidi talk about his wife last week made me wonder how was, how has Jacqueline influenced your career in the show? Also, shout out to El Cubano. Come back and be go, yeah, where is El Cubano? He used to be first. Um, I mean, I've said this before. Like, if I didn't have stability, my wife... My kids, if I didn't have that, I don't think I'd get to anywhere near where I am now, wherever that is. Um, the fact that we've known each other since we were so young, the the friendship, the camaraderie, the connection, all that stuff, uh, it just goes a long way. The trust. Um, so yeah, it just, you can't put a price on that knowledge, that confidence that you get when you leave. You don't feel, I, I, I was never made to feel uh, guilty for leaving. I was never, never made to feel like I should be staying home or told that I should stay home. And, uh, you know, back in the day, I used to travel a hell of a lot more than now. Um, so it's, it's just been huge. Like that's what you want in a partner in crime, so to speak. That's what you want in someone supporting you. That's what you want with someone having your back. That's what you want with someone who's allowing you to chase your dreams. We got engaged and I started my website, jerrypark.com. I had no job. I had nothing. I was not earning any money. And I'm starting a website where I'm interviewing fighters that I meet off of MySpace. It's crazy. And never questioned it, never doubted it. Always had my back, always supported. So, um... Yeah, that's that's all you can ask for, really. And uh, so I feel very lucky. And then you have the stability of home, and then you have the kids who give you balance and perspective, and 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 motivation and drive and and happiness and and a good distraction. And it's just yeah, uh, feel feel very very lucky. Now I will say we are headed to penalty kicks in this Man City uh, Real Madrid tilt, which is quite wild. So we're going to keep our eye on this, and maybe even a little play by play. Stay tuned. You got it up on your computer now, too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is this is musty TV right here. Um, Samuel is asking me why I always tell fighters not to read the comments, and then I address the comments sometimes. He makes a great point. I just wanted to read that to hold myself accountable, but he's right. I do say that to the fighters, and I do address them sometimes. And so you're right. I need to do better, and uh, I will work on this, Samuel. Thank you for calling me out. Now, here we go. I'm actually quite nervous. I wonder if my boys are watching right now. I think they have soccer. Julian boys Alvarez. Want Man City to win. Yeah. Well, yeah. my older son, uh, my oldest son uh, Oliver, loves Man City. Julian Alvarez up first. What a scene this is. And they're at they're at Etihad, right? Yeah. Man, this is it—the treble. Because I believe they're going to win the Premier League. I think they'll win FA Cup. They could go back to back treble, treble. Never Actually, been done. 
It might be at the at the Bernabeu. Man, look at Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker sweating. Okay, here we go. No, Champions Etihad, League. What's that? They are at the Etihad. Sorry. Just had to do a little double check there. Um, Andy Koufax says that Diego Lopez looks exactly like a young Jim Lampley. Vidal Sassoon hair notwithstanding. And I thought about this, and I actually think it's fantastic. Jim Lampley with the... With the, the 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 jaw, the chin. It's a great call. Julian Alvarez up first. Here we go. Well, quite behind me. And oh wow. He what he scored at that point? Uh no, he yeah many seconds before that. Oh well. How's that even possible? I don't know. Refresh your browser. Yeah, I just did. All right, so he did score, by the way. I didn't even actually finish yeah, yeah, the yeah. thought if anyone's uh, <laughs> following along. Uh, now we have uh, Luka Modric. Of, uh, by the way, can I get a shout-out for like knowing the people by their faces now? I mean, a couple of years ago, it wasn't quite the same. I mean, Luka Modric has the bound door. No, come on. Um, Ederson in goal. And here we go. Luka is stopped. Is stopped. <laughs> But now we're synced up. Now we're synced up. Oh perfectly. my yeah. God! What a save by Ederson. Oh, uh, he's angry. Oh yeah, I, I kind of feel like I need to call my son right now. Um, oh my God, that I don't is know who a, I want to win. That is a huge save, Ederson, the Brazilian native. Okay, back to the questions. <laughs> Did the Max KO change my stance on the BMF? I mean, I think that KO happens with or without the BMF. BMF is fun, man. It's fine. I don't it's care. Fun. Yeah, I'm not, I'm there not... it is. He's come around to it. Just take it for what it is. It's a gimmick. It's fine. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the old man. I'm not the old man on the lawn telling the kids to get off. You're guaranteed to get a sick fight. This is something fun. Oh my god! All right. So yes, I'm fine with it. Anyway, here we go. Bernardo Silva just what was that? Oh, Bernardo Silva. Straight Bernardo out. Silva what just shot that? it straight at the goalie. What was that? Uh yeah, know yourself, Bernardo Silva. What was that? That's bad. He just kicked it right to the goalie. That's but, bad. By the way, I, I, my son would know this. Real Madrid goalie. What is his name? Oh, is it Thibaut Courtois? No, 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 it's not because he's injured. I'm gonna look this up. Wow, he really shot the bed there. The thing about the BMF belt, if it does go Ilya Max and they're both on the line, that would be the first time uh, a champion would have the BMF belt. Okay, so that's an interesting thing. Oh, here's my guy, Jude Bellingham. Jude Bellingham. Hey, oh, Jude. Got oh, him. easy work for Jude. No problems right there. No problems. No problems for Jude Bellingham. I mean, this is incredible theater right now. Jude Bellingham, like a cool-ass customer, right? Just walking up. Uh, no problems. I love Jude. By the way, I was DMing with him a couple of uh, days ago. Did you know that? No. Okay. Did you wish him good luck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you're the man, Jude. Okay, this gentleman, I don't know. Who's this? Who's this? He's a good bloke, number eight. I need my son here. And here's Man City up, and he saved! He oh. got saved! <laughs> ah! He blew it, number eight. Andre Lunin. The Ukrainian national with the big save on. I don't know who number eight is. Oh, Holland's out, huh? They sat him down. He can't do it. Wow. Okay, we continue. <laughs> to the questions. We're just going to. Oh, my God. Andre. I love the BMF. There it is. It's all the clip we needed right there. Did I? Yes, that's it. Okay. They're distracted. I love the BMF. Dude, now here we go. Here comes Real Madrid looking to take the lead. And a little bit of stutter step. And they score. Back wow. to the net. Real Madrid. Can I say I'm sort... Is it weird? I'm, I'm rooting for Man City. Uh, I'm rooting for Real Madrid. Really? Yeah. I, I do love Jude. Oh, this love one. Jude. It's Port Taporia. Yeah. But I, I'd like I'd like to see them go back to back, even though they what they've they've got a hundred and fifteen infractions. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. Let's get some shake up here. You think so? 
Yeah, let's get some shake. Uh, I mean, Phil also, Foden. we're saying this. I mean, Real Madrid has also won, I think, 14 or whatever. Here's our guy, Phil Foden, the youngster, the English national, and he puts it in the back of the net, 2 2. Ooh, he's got a little thing on his hand there, huh? He's got a little thing on the fingers. Ah, uh, Phil Foden. Uh, Rick, are you locked in as well? Rick's out of here. Uh, Matt is asking, where can he get a, a Who Me t shirt? Working on it. Coming, I promise. Um, ooh, who Foden. Me? Foden walked by that other dude on uh, Real Madrid. It was a little, uh, a little showmanship there. Uh, Dublin 1929 is asking me about why no matchroom Eddie Hearn involvement. I think we'll hear more about this in the coming weeks, but ultimately I think they... Oh, here's Real Madrid. Ooh, back in the net. So this is it. This is it right here, right? If Man City misses this... Yeah. Win and then Real has to... Or get it in and Real has to kick or... No, it wasn't that the fifth. Was, was that the fifth or was that, it... was, that was Real's fourth. Oh, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, anyway, I think we're going to find out more about all this. Okay, here we go. Oh, Ederson going up there. The goalie. I love when this happens. <laughs> I love when this happens. The Brazilian national. Oh, look at Pep. Pep is nervous. Ederson wearing the gloves. Here we go, Ederson. Back in the net. Woo! Right in the corner. Wow. Well done, Ederson. Cool as can be. Oh, uh, yeah, know yourself. Goalie versus goalie. Now is the goalie going to respond? This is nerve-wracking stuff. Our Brian Tucker says that uh, his stream is lagging, so we're I'm way sorry. ahead of him. I'm sorry. Uh, this, is, this is Champions League quarterfinals, the defending champs against El Galacticos. I mean, what, what is better than this? I mean, this is it right here. This is for it. Oh, my God. This is it. Yeah. This number 22. Who's number 22? I want to give the guy props. He's, he looks like a, a good young man. Oh, uh, Rudiger. It's uh, Antonio Rudiger, the German national, to send Real Madrid to the semifinals. Ah, oh, and he puts it in wow, the back of the net. Go. Yeah, now let's yourself, go. Real Madrid. The Kings are dead. The witch is dead as the entire team converges midfield. Oh, and it is silent, stunned silence. At Eddie had a rare moment of defeat for Pep and the boys. They have not tasted this in quite some time. Someone get Dakota Decheva on the phone right now. We'll do oh, it. We'll, yeah. we'll do it. We'll it's do a little round table with Ilya. Oh, they did it. <laughs> As the Real Madrid supporters are in full force, celebrating, rejoicing. On cloud nine, Jude Bellingham in his home country, running over. To the supporters, uh, they hope for a different scene at the Euros later on this year as Jude, of course, will be representing England. But that is it. So Bayern and Man City, no, Bayern and Real Madrid advance. That means no English teams left. No English teams left. And I do want to say hello to my son who is watching right now. And I do believe my wife as well. I told them to watch my play-by-play -play to listen. Maybe I was the one that... Uh, that uh, informed them of the news. I'm sorry, I was rooting for Man City. I think we all were, right, GC? You were rooting for them as well, right? No, I was cheering for Real Madrid. I thought they made that <laughs> no, no, I was clear. Trying, you know, as a little kid watching, as you're wearing your, you know, no, Dortmund. no, no. I, we need that German representation in the. Do uh, we? In the Do final. we? I mean, we already have one team. In, oh, you want Germany versus Germany? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, that's boring. Yeah, we could see that in the Bundesliga. What do we need to see that? <laughs> no, I just need one team. I just. Oh, need one he hit team. the post. He hit the post. The game winner hit the post and went in. Brilliant. He almost Brilliant, botched it. Ah, uh, you yeah, know yourself. Wow, what a scene. These are the champions. The man. The forty to be. Sing with me, guys. The champions. <laughs> We got to end on 24, right? Shout out to Kobe. Let's end on 24. Great questions. Great day. Oh, look at Vinny Jr. up in there. Vinny Jr., let him know, Vinny. Backed you all along. Vinny fired up. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.